Okay, welcome back to members of 121 Community Church in Grapevine, Texas, in our ongoing study in the Book of Romans by the Apostle Paul, his masterpiece. We are using the Karl Barth Commentary, 7th edition, dated 1965. We're going to look at 14, 10 through 18. We won't quite finish chapter 14. We still will have another little lesson after this, but we get into the concept of stumbling block in this lesson. And what Paul does, he reflects back at uh, what the Pharisees had done and what he had done as a Pharisee, and that is to create a system of works righteousness that was a stumbling block. And so it's a lesson of Paul looking back and then looking within his own life after the apocalypse of Damascus, when the veil was pulled back and the truth of Jesus Christ confronted Saul and elected him in the midst of his rejection. So let's keep this in mind that uh, Paul will be looking back at his days as a Pharisee, the days of food laws, Sabbath laws, strict works righteousness. Let's go to block one. Judgment as our truth of being. Why do you judge your brother and why you despise him? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow before me and every tongue confess unto God. Each of us will give an account from Lagas, an account of himself to God. Now, Bart, here's 11 point judgment as the truth of our being. The Lord is judge over the living and the dead, over life and death. This futurum is the truth of our being. Egoist rigorism and uh, the detachment of the believer both converge here as embarrassment and hope. Double predestination is the truth of our life and death. Election and rejection are true. But it is the faithfulness of Christ that justifies. And Bart is absolutely correct on that. All you have to do is... Uh, read Philippians chapter 2 in its entirety over and over and over again and meditate on Philippians chapter 2 and you will know that what is said here by Bart is correct. It is the faithfulness of Christ that justifies. On our side, our knowledge is the hope of God and is the hope of salvation. We are elected in the midst of our renunciation of all merit. Just like Saul was elected to become Paul. Bart concludes, we see only Christ, just like saw Saul on the road to Damascus saw only Christ. The veil was pulled back and Saul was confronted by the light of Christ, the blinding light of Christ that broke him in grace. And through that brokenness of grace, Saul recognized the need for repentance and then entered the wilderness for prayer and fasting and contemplation and realized he could never be the same person again, not after being confronted by the truth and the light of Christ. Let's go on to block two. Okay, stumbling block or manifestation of righteousness. 13, 14, and 15. No longer should we judge one another, and do not put a stumbling block before your brother, or a method to cause stumbling. Notice, in the Greek, there are two words for stumbling block. Proskoma is the object as a stumbling block. Proskoma. Scandalon is the method that causes stumbling, 
Well, I can tell you what that is. It's the Pharisee food laws and Sabbath laws. That is what Paul is looking back on when he was Saul the Pharisee. They had strict food laws, strict Sabbath laws, and you could get a handle on that because you just had this list of rules, and if you obeyed those rules, you could achieve works righteousness. Now, Paul looks back at something he condemns. He says that whole system of works righteousness was a stumbling block, a method to cause stumbling, a scandal on. It was a method to cause stumbling. It possessed no compassion. No compassion. Now verse 14. I am persuaded in the Lord that nothing is unclean of itself. Only to the one reckoning it unclean, to that one person it is unclean. If According to the food laws, your brother is grieved. You will no longer be walking in love if you destroy that person, if you destroy their worth by the abuse of your freedom. Because that person is one for whom Christ died. Now let's take a look at uh, Karl Barth. Aren't these powerful scriptures from Paul here? Uh, he truly has realized he can no longer be that Saul the Pharisee. Now, Bart's eight-point manifestation of righteousness, not scandal. God's judgment includes invisibility and manifestation of righteousness. But when the Pharisees judged others, they only succeeded in condemning themselves because it was all about self-righteousness, a righteousness of works. Scandalon means the stumbling block created by the Pharisees of food laws and Sabbath laws that exceeded Scripture and became simply stumbling blocks because there was a lack of compassion, because there was a lack of agape, self-giving love. But when God judges or hardens, there is always a possibility for hope and promise. The Pharisees created rules that bound people rather than liberate them. Now Paul knows that this works righteousness was wrong. What is needed is to return to our primal origin through Christ. We need to lead others to the opportunity, to the conviction, and the need for repentance as metanoia, change of mind, change of heart. Not obedience of rules, but change of mind, change of heart, metanoia. Metanoia. Let's move on to block three. Okay. Demonstrating the righteousness of God, 16, 17, and 18. Therefore, let not your good be spoken of as evil. For the kingdom of God is not about eating and drinking law, uh, rules and laws, but instead it's about righteousness, the kaisune, and peace and joy. Remember, irene, peace, is healing of fragmentation, all done within the Holy Spirit. For in these things you are serving Christ, which is well-pleasing to God. Wow. Verse 18. For in these things, in, manifest, in manifesting righteousness, in uh, creating healing of fragmentation, you are serving Christ, which is well-pleasing to God. Let's take a look at Bart. All right, Karl Barth, we rejoice in the freedom of God's kingdom, but our freedom must demonstrate God's freedom, critiqued by the crisis, the judgment of the autonomy of the divine truth in the person of Jesus Christ. We exist within and under the crisis of God's righteousness, and who is God's righteousness? God's righteousness is a person, the exalted Jesus Christ. Tremendous lesson on a 
Paul, looking back to the uh, system, he's looking back to the, the uh, Pharisees' system, the system of works righteousness, a list of eating rules, a list of Sabbath rules that were all about uh, repentance as rule obedience. It was all about repentance as rule obedience. It had nothing to do with the heart, nothing to do with the mind. It was obedience to a list of rules. If you did that, you were considered holy. And what you really did was become self-righteous. Now, Paul realizes he cannot be that person ever again after going through the apocalypse. Remember, apocalypse means unveiling of truth after going through the apocalypse of Damascus, where he was confronted by the truth and the light of Jesus Christ. We're going to conclude by looking at Bart's notes in block two. Block two, note four. We'll conclude this lesson. Bart's eight-point manifestation of righteousness, not scandal. God's judgment includes invisibility and manifestation of dikaiosune righteousness. When the Pharisees judged others, they only succeeded in condemning themselves in their self-righteousness. Scandalon means the stumbling block created by the Pharisees of food laws and Sabbath laws that exceeded Scripture. They became stumbling blocks because there was a lack of compassion, a lack of agape, self-giving love, a lack of agape, a lack of self-giving love. But when God judges, there is still a possibility for hope and promise. The Pharisees created rules that bound people and caused stumbling rather than liberate them. Now Paul, looking back, knows that this works righteousness was wrong. What is needed is to return to our primal origin through the Son of God, Jesus Christ. Then we can lead others to the opportunity for metanoia repentance, not obedience of rules, but change metanoia change of heart, change of mind, true metanoia, repentance. It means, in the Greek, change of mind. That's what it means to repent. Metaphorically, change of heart. Change of motivational base. Change of the core of your being. Not obey a series of ritualistic, legalistic rules, but a genuine inner change of the inner being. That's going to wrap up 14, 10 through 18. We have one more mini lesson. It'll be 14, 19 through 23. That's going to wrap up 14, 10 through 18.